Hello, I'm Kathleen from Luke's Sewing Center in Tri-County. Today I'm going to show you a few of the features of your Viking Brilliance 80. So let's get started. With your machine, you received a user's guide. And if you might turn to page 13 of your user's guide, you can follow along. So I'm going to go over the accessories first. You have two thread nets, you'll have a screwdriver, a seam ripper, and a brush, which helps you to clean out the lint and clean underneath your uh, stitch plate. You'll receive in your machine two edge quilting guides, two felt pads for your spools, a spool cap, a small spool cap, a medium spool cap, and two large spool caps, 11 bobbins. You will get 16 hoop clips that you'll use with your embroidery hoops, a multi-purpose tool and button reed. You'll receive also a straight, straight stitch plate. Also that won't be pictured in your book, but you'll also have needles, a pair of scissors, a hard cover for your machine, and several other things to help you get started. Also receive a number of presser feet. Your utility foot A, which you'll use for most of your sewing needs, will come on your machine. But in addition to that, you'll have a decorative foot B, a buttonhole foot C, a blind hem foot D, a zipper foot E, a non-stick glide foot H, specially used for sewing on foam, vinyl, plastic, or leather, an edge foot J, a quilter's quarter piercing foot P, your sensor Q foot for your embroidery hoops, an embroidery darning foot, a side motion foot S, and your sensor one, but one step buttonhole foot, you also receive self-adhesive glide plates, which you can attach to any of your other feet besides the H foot to help uh, sew on foam, vinyl, plastic, or leather. You'll also have an interchangeable dual feed uh, mechanism and the feet to go with it. So for doing embroidery, you have your embroidery arm that will attach to your machine. You'll have three embroidery hoops, a 120 by 120, a 260 by 200, and a 360 by 200. You also will receive a package that includes embroidery thread, some fabric, and some stabilizer. So the first thing we're going to do is wind a bobbin. And if you want to follow along, you can see diagrams on page 34 of your user guide. First, we're going to open the lid and we're going to place a spool of thread on the thread spool pin. I always use an end cap that's slightly larger than the spool to prevent any hangups on either end of the thread spool. First, I'm going to put it behind this thread guide and then make sure it snaps in tight through the bobbin tension guide. Place it through the thread guide here and then take your empty spool and place it with the logo side up. And this particular one will have to, to pre-wind a little bit because it doesn't have a hole in it. Once you have gotten it pre-wound a little bit, then you want to pull your lever forward and that's gonna bring up the menu for bobbin winding. You'll want to hit the start button and it will start winding. When it's complete, it will automatically stop. Once your bobbin stops, you can pull it off and use the thread cutter that is right to the right of your bobbin pin. 
Now I always like to snip off the little thread that is in the top here before I put it in my machine. To insert the bobbin into the bobbin case, you remove the bobbin cover, it should slide out. You place the bobbin in so that the thread is coming off to the left off the top of the bobbin or the part that is furthest away from you when you see the Viking logo on the top. You place that in and then you bring the thread across to this little notch right here. Make sure it goes under that notch and across to the notch on the upper left side. Bring it down across and you'll follow, if you follow the little arrows, there's a notch here that you can slide it under. I always leave a little tail until after I get the cover back on. You wanna slide that on so it snaps in place. Then you can take the little tail and slide it to the left and it will automatically cut it so it's the appropriate length. To thread your machine, you have your spool on your spool pin, you have an end cap on. You're gonna take your thread behind the thread guide on the top and underneath the area right here. You're going to bring it across so that you can bring it down through the thread slot and that puts it into the tension discs. You bring it up on the left hand side and at the top, you're going to bring it to the right, across the back so that it goes under the thread loop looper and down through the bottom. At the bottom, at the top of the needle stand, you have a thread guide here that you want to go from the left to the right and slide that thread in. Once you've placed it through the thread guide, it puts it in the appropriate position to appropriately thread your needle. You're going to bring the thread, the needle threader down, place the thread along the left hand side, the first hook on the left, down in front of the needle and through the notch on the right hand side and hold it gently towards the back and up a little bit. When you let go of the needle threader, it's going to pull the thread through the needle and create a loop in the back side that you can grab a hold of and pull your thread through the rest of the way. We're going to go through a few of the buttons on the front of the machine. You have a speed button which helps you adjust to uh, very slow or very fast depending on the type of sewing you're doing. You have a stop button and a fix button. The fix button will allow your machine to take three stitches in one place before starting down the length of a seam. You can also hit the fix button at the end of a seam to put three stitches in a row straight in one spot to help prevent your seam from fraying. You have a reverse button and a start stop button. Your start stop button will come into play when you're doing embroidery. You have a cut button and this will cut the threads when you're, you're stopping at the end of a seam. You have a presser foot up button and a presser foot down button as well as a needle up and down button. On your basic screen you're going to be in your, your advisor screen and it's going to give you fabric selections, some stitch techniques if you need them, the type of seam you might want to be able to sew. But to get started, you see the Start New button at the bottom. When we depress that, we get the stitch screen where you're going to see your utility stitches first and it will tell you which presser foot to have on your machine. And in this case, we are, have the woven fabric selection it's going to give you, whether you want to do a mirror images, it's going to give you stitch length and stitch width. So if we picked a straight stitch, which it has right there, it's going to have it down the center. Now if we need to move the needle right or left, 
we can we can touch this and it's going to move it over to the right or go this direction to the left and you'll see a minus number come up so that you're on the left hand side of center if we want to get back to center really quickly i just hit another stitch and go back to the one i want and it defaults to the center another stitch that's very often used is a zigzag stitch number six here if you press number six you see it changes to a zigzag it still is the a presser foot and this now gives you the width of your stitch now if a five is too wide you want to select the negative so that it goes to a narrower zigzag stitch but if the length here is too long you're you can change the length of the stitch by using the selectors to the right of your stitch diagram so we have selected now a three for length and a two and a half for width now if we want to go back again to the default that came up when we first selected the stitch the quick way to do that is select another stitch and then go back to your, your original selection. Now, to demonstrate the zigzag stitch, how you can see the differences, we're gonna start with it at the default settings. I'm gonna raise my presser foot, place my fabric under, lower my presser foot, and go ahead and start stitching. my presser foot and as you can see we have a relatively wide zigzag now this zigzag happens to do a double stitch on each uh, part of the stitch if we select number four it defaults to a three width and a four length demonstrate that stitch now you can see the difference now one of the features of this machine is you don't always have to use the button for the presser foot down you can just go ahead and step on your foot pedal and there you can see a standard zigzag stitch now, I'm going to adjust the width and the length of that stitch so that you can make some comparisons. We're going to go ahead and lengthen the stitch to uh, an eight and a half, and we're going to widen the stitch, excuse me, widen the stitch to a five and a half. And I'm going to do that alongside the other stitch that I just did. Now you always want to make sure your thread is behind the little bar at the front edge of your foot. And I'm going to use the cutter at the end here. Now you can see the difference from our original default setting for zigzag and the adjustments that we made to it, how much wider and longer the stitches are. Now to access the other stitch patterns that are available on this machine, you have several different ways of getting there. You have these little flags on the side here. This one is for the, all the stitches. And if you press that, it brings the screen over so you can see all the stitches in a particular category at one time. Along the bottom here, you have your different stitch categories. A is your utility stitches, B are your applique stitches, C, your heirloom stitches, D, your quilt stitches, E, are your crafting stitches. They take some time to pull up sometimes. F, are your decorative stitches. G, are your vintage stitches. H, are your children's stitches, and there's a lot of fun little patterns in there. J, gives you your scallop stitch stitches. K, are your omni-motion stitches. L gives you some dimensional stitches, which means thickness. M gives you some theme stitches. N gives you some embellishment stitches. O give you, gives you single motif stitches. P are your specialty stitches. Q, your decorative tapering stitches. R, your pictogram stitches. S, your four-way stitches. 
T are your eight waist stitches, and then you're back to A again. The other flags along the left-hand side of your stitch selection screen are the A is for your font stitches, and it's going to bring up your font menu. Uh, the first at the top is your project stitches, and this one doesn't have any projects loaded, but if you were to load projects, this is where they would be stored. Your heart down at the bottom is for your favorites or your, some of your embroidery files. Before you start stitching, you're going to want to engage the stop button, and you can also engage the fix button. and it stops automatically. And there you have your pattern of four. Now, if you decide you want that airplane to be upside down and backwards, you can change that by coming over to your screen. You hit the edit button and it brings up your four stitches. And you notice here the airplane is highlighted we can mirror that, we can make it backwards, and then we can make it upside down. So when it stitches out again, that airplane's going to be flying upside down away from your, the rest of your pattern. And I'll show you what that looks like here. And you can see that your airplane here is upside down compared to the first run. We're now going to uh, switch over to doing embroidery. So the first thing you need to do is remove your accessory case by sliding, the, sliding this off and you set that aside. We're going to also turn the machine off prior to attaching the embroidery arm. Make sure that you are holding on to your embroidery arm by the case and not the movable arm piece. You can ruin the calibration by, by uh, holding on to the arm piece. You're going to slide this onto your machine making sure that the connector in the back aligns with the socket behind your machine. It should easily snap in place. Once you have it attached, you can return your machine back on and your window screen will come up in the embroidery mode. One of the other things you're going to need to do before you get started is remove the ankle and the presser foot and attach your cue foot. When you're doing embroidery, you want to use a 40 weight embroidery thread. Luke's carries both 100% rayon and 100% polyester embroidery weight thread in a variety of wonderful colors to make your embroidery designs pop. You just thread your machine just like you do for sewing using an end cap and threading it through the normal sewing process. When your embroidery arm is attached and you start your machine, you're gonna notice that it comes up in your basic embroidery mode. If you are going to do sewing, 
you would want to switch using the icons at the top where you have the hoop or you have your sewing foot. We're gonna hit the start new. We're going to allow the arm to calibrate. And then we're going to notice that there are designs here. Now, there are a number of designs in your sampler booklet. I happen to have picked one that is relatively small. It's in the B directory, and I'll show you how to find that. We're gonna stitch out B number 064. Down at the bottom, you'll see, just like you had for your sewing stitches, you'll see a little directory that has alphabets. So we're in the A, which is the signature designs, but we're gonna to switch to the B, which is a golden collection design. We're just going to um, allow this screen to come across to give us a little more view, and we're gonna scroll till we hit number 64, which is right here. You notice we highlighted, it gives you a little information down here. It tells you the size. This one happens to be 36 by 54 millimeters. It's going to have one color and it's gonna have 914 stitches. To bring it into our stitch grid, you wanna just place your finger on it long enough for it to pop in. You notice that it's kind of off to the side. So you want to use the button with the four arrows down here Highlight that button. This is gonna tell you where it's positioned. If you wanna bring it into the center of your screen, you wanna hit the center here and it pops it in automatically to the center. Now, if you want to move it around in there a little bit, you can use your up arrow, your down arrow, or your left and right arrow. But after moving it around, if you decide you don't like where you want it and back it in the center, you just hit the button in the center again. If, so one of the things, it may be hard to see because this is dark against a dark background. If you wanna change your background, you hit your, your JOS button. You can change your background color here. We're gonna do white. You hit your JOS button again, and now you've got more contrast. If you want to rotate it, the button with the two arrows that are going in a circle will allow you to either rotate by 90 degrees at a time by hitting the, the center or to go a few degrees at a time just by hitting one arrow or the other. And I'm gonna get us back to our original location there. You can also resize the project. You can increase by 20% or decrease by 20% with the, with the button that shows the embedded squares. You hit that button, it's gonna give you your current size. You can, hit, you can come over here where you have a lock. The lock means that it's going to maintain its proportion when you increase or decrease the size of your project. If you're, if you're ready, then you would hit the go button. But meanwhile, we need to also notice the size of the hoop. So this one says it's set for an 80 by 80 hoop, but the smallest hoop that came with your machine is a 120 by 120. You want to make sure you change that hoop size. So you select the hoop size, it gives you a menu, find the appropriate hoop size, select that, it now will read 120 by 120. And you notice your design is a little smaller in the whole hoop placement. You can take that whole design with your finger and slide it over. If that red square shows up like this, that means you're outside the stitch area. And we're just gonna put this over in the corner like this. Some of the other features that will interest you is your toolbox right here. When you select that, you'll see you have a trash can, you have a copy function, you have a mirror mirroring function. So let's say we wanna take our design and we wanna flip it left to right. We're gonna use the left right arrow. And as you can see here, when you get rid of your toolbox, that the design flipped the other way. Now, if we wanna return it, there's another, 
an alternative way to do that. Put your finger on it and you'll see a little shadowed menu come up. Then just drag your, drag your finger over and hit the mirror side to side and it returns it to your original orientation. There's also a mirror that will flip it from top to bottom. If you want to delete your design, you can hold your finger there and drag it to the, the trash can, or you can use the trash can in your toolbox by just hitting trash can. As long as your design is highlighted with the square on the outside, you can delete your design that way. If you want to bring an additional design in, you can do that by hitting your heart again, excuse me, your flower, and it will bring back up the menu you were in before. And if you go all the way across by hitting that a second time, we can pull a second element into the design. We'll pull in number 66. Again, just touching it highlights it, but holding your finger on it pulls the design in and you see it went over the top of the other one. So we're just gonna drag it off to the side so that you can see both designs separately. Let's pretend you don't want that second design that we just brought in. We're gonna highlight that, put the box around it, go to our toolbox and hit the, the trash can and there it's gone from the screen. Let's bring in some letters. Well, so we'll hit the A. We'll pick a style of letter. Let's go with the block letters here. It's going to bring up your keyboard. I'm going to type in Luke's. I'm going to use the L and then I'm going to go to a lowercase U K E I'm going to switch over to our menu for punctuation, find the apostrophe, and then switch back to our letters again to get to our S. I'm going to say OK. It brings it in. I'm going to make this menu disappear with using the side arrow. I'm going to move up Luke's up just a little bit. And I think I'm going to do a little resizing. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. So I'm going to use the up arrow. And it's going to increase it to a maximum of 20% larger than the original. When you can no longer make it any larger, we'll go gray and you will not see it highlighted anymore. Once you're done and you're happy with your design, then you want to make sure you've hooped your stabilizer and fabric. As you notice, I have my hoop and I have my stabilizer and my stabilizer is larger than my hoop. I've also selected fabric and cut that out so that it is larger than my hoop. I'm going to lay them one on top of the other kind of smooth them out. I'm going to open the spring clip on the hoop. Bring your, your base part of your hoop and lay your fabric and stabilizer over. I'm going to slide the top part of the hoop to clamp it in and press it down so that everything is all pressed in tightly. I'm going to close my spring clip, spring clip. Now, if it's too tight, you want to loosen the spring at the end here, a couple turns, and then try again. And there it snaps shut. Before we attach our hoop to the embroidery arm, we're going to do a couple additional things on our screen. I'm going to set this aside. You notice the go button down at the bottom. You're going to want to select your go button. It's going to bring the, the stitch out screen up. Couple things that you can do. You can 
look at your color options here. Since our design only has one color, then we don't need to do anything with the color options. But one of the things that helps stabilize your fabric and your stabilizer in the hoop is basting around your design. So you wanna select based around design. Notice that you have your sensor Q foot, um, presser foot uh, uh, um, selected. You've got the deluxe stitch system. You also have some options to have your thread automatically cut and jump stitched. Um, so this is a, it saves you some extra steps when doing your design and cleanup. So select that. Then you want to hit your continue button. You're gonna have, the arm is gonna move into position and it's gonna tell you to attach your hoop. One of the important things when you attach your hoop is you'll notice you have the gray lever here. Do not depress that when you attach the hoop. Simply slide your hoop into place. And let the button snap back on its own. This button is only for releasing the hoop from the arm. We can say OK. And we have the first thing there, it says fix. This is our stitch around the design. So we're gonna hit our start stop button. And it's going to start putting a basting stitch around the outside of the design. This is also an opportunity to know where and how big your design is going to be and where it's placed. If for some reason at this point you do not like where it's placed and you want to make a move, move it, you can use your return button on the screen and it'll send you back to your original editing screen. So at this point, we're now ready to start stitching our actual design. Using the start stop button, select that, and it's gonna start with the first letter of Luke's. Now it's stopped at the end of that letter and it's telling us to change thread, but we are not gonna change thread on this design. We're gonna keep it all the same color. If you wanted to change your thread color, this would be the time to do it and you would just do, you would thread it just like you normally thread your machine for either sewing or like I demonstrated at the beginning of the embroidery section. Since we're not gonna change the thread, we can say okay and just hit our start stop button to start. And it's going to stitch our design next and then we'll go back and pick up the rest of the letters in loops when it's done with the design. Now that it's stitched out our heart design, it's going to want to stitch the rest of the letters. And if I select OK and scroll our blo color block, you notice that there are four additional color blocks beyond the one that it's going to stitch next. In order to stitch contiguously, we can remove the stop button here, deselect it, turn that light off. At this point, it's going to stitch the rest of the letters without stopping in between. We just hit our start stop button and away it goes. Now that it's done, your screen is gonna tell you your embroidery is also finished. You can select OK, and you can return back to your edit screen. It's going to ask you to remove the hoop, say OK, and at this point, you're going to depress the gray rocker button and slide your hoop out of the arm, and your design is finished. One of the things I want you to notice is you have centering lines here. When you center your project on the screen, it automatically centers it in the hoop as long as you have the numbers at the bottom, the size numbers of the hoop, 
so that you can read them right side up when you have the hoop appropriately attached to the arm. At this point, we're going to delete our design from the screen. Remember, our trash can is in the toolbox, and we are going to delete all our letters going across. Now, if we wanted to stitch something that was on a USB drive, you want to use the, the little file folder that has the heart on it. When you pull that out, it's going to give you a menu. Some of those designs might come from your Sonet. They might come from the machine, or they might come from your USB drive. If you select your USB drive, hold the button long enough for it to, to pull up the design. And when you see these little flower heart or these little flowers here, that means that's a design that's already there. If you want to see what that design is because you don't recognize the file name, you can use the little button that shows the nine little squares on it by hitting that button and it changes it to a pictorial version of the file so you can easily scroll through and see the design that you want to select. And again, to select any of those designs, you press your finger on it long enough for it to pop into the screen. Maintaining your machine to keep it sewing at its optimum is always important. One of the easiest things you can do to maintain your machine is to remove any lint that accumulates under the stitch plate. To remove the stitch plate, just gently pry your screwdriver underneath the corner of the plate and it will pop up and you can set it aside. You can remove your bobbin. You can use your brush and clean out any lint that might be in this area. If you need to remove your bobbin case to get underneath it, the plate here is easily removed. Your bobbin case can lift out. And you just set it aside. And you see there's quite an accumulation of lint in here, so we are going to dust that out. It's really important to note that you do not want to use any sort of uh, mechanism that would blow the dust out because it will cause the dust and any thread lint to get embedded further into the machine and potentially gum up some of the important works like the mechanism that works your feed dogs or other mechanisms that uh, would need a technician to maintain. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit of lint out of there by the little pile that's in front here. You especially wanna do this if you're using cotton thread or if you are sewing with fabrics like flannel or fleece that have a lot of lint produ produced from them. You must be really careful that you don't get your fingers involved in the cutting tool right here. Uh, th that is very sharp and you want to make sure that you don't uh, end up cutting your fingers and then dropping blood inside your machine. We'll put this back together by putting the bobbin case back in and it sits down in here. You'll, you'll know it's there when it, when it sits down at the bottom. You want to put the collar plate around it, drop that in and slide it into place. There's little notches that line up and it will sit flush here. Place the plate in by putting the back tab in first. Slide it towards the back and it will snap down securely. You can put your bobbin back in. And your bobbin cover back on. 